Hey ladies, welcome to Beauty of Becoming. I am pumped for this episode because I get to introduce you to someone who is very special and important to my life. His name is Pastor Andrew and he has been a pastor to me and also just an incredible spiritual dad, especially since my dad has gone home to be with the Lord. He's just really stepped in into a spiritual father role that's meant so much to me and and has brought so much life to me. And and so I'm very grateful for him and his beautiful wife, Holly. They have kids as well. And um, they are just a, a power team. And Pastor Andrew is the pastor of The Refuge in uh, Loves Park, Illinois, which is right outside of my hometown, Rockford. So that that's where we met. And really, my life has never been the same since. <laughs> and you'll understand why when you listen to this episode, because we came in with just an idea of, hey, this is what I think we should talk about. I think this would be very powerful. And Pastor Andrew's like, all right. And the Lord gave me a word as I was praying for this episode. So I was like, all right, we can deliver, you know, you can deliver that and and we'll go from there. And it literally turned into just this amazing, like, time with Holy Spirit where uh, the Lord was just speaking things and declaring things over all of you who are listening. And and I was receiving every every bit of it, every drop of it. <laughs> it is a powerful episode, one that you may need to go back and listen to several times and write, write some notes, take some notes, because there are powerful declarations that as a spiritual dad and, and as our Father in Heaven is speaking through Him, like there are things that that are going to just bless you and and push you into what God has for you like you know allow you to step into things and and your identity in Christ. So be encouraged that you are here for such a time as this. God is raising you up for such a time as this and your best days aren't behind you, they're ahead of you. Things may not make sense right now, but God's going to connect the dots and you're going to understand why he's brought you by this way. So let's go ahead and be encouraged by this episode with Pastor Andrew. Hey ladies, welcome to Beauty of Becoming. I am your host Whitney and I'm so excited for today's episode because we just have um, an incredible person that's going to be on tonight with me and I've already been crying. (laughs) Uh, That's how you know it's going to be a good episode. We were talking and praying beforehand and I'm already already crying and already feel the presence of God here. So I'm super excited. I know uh, this episode is going to be life changing and just a blessing to you and an encouragement. And uh, so I just want to go ahead and welcome our guest, Pastor Andrew Hall. Hey, Miss Whitney, it's great to be here on the broadcast. I want to appreciate, uh, I just want to let you know, I appreciate for you uh, inviting me to be a part of this broadcast. And just like you, I'm excited about what God's going to do tonight and, and what he wants to release to the to the ladies that are going to be listening and watching. Yeah, that's awesome. And actually, Pastor Andrew was praying over this broadcast and the uh, <laughs> Lord was speaking to him about it. So uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to ask him about that because um, it involves you ladies, and I think you definitely need to hear it and will be encouraged about what God is speaking, just about what he's releasing through this episode and through this podcast. So I'm super excited uh, to be a part of that. But uh, Pastor Andrew, we have known each other uh, for, let's see, over 10 years, (laughs) probably 10 or 12 years already. (laughs) And ladies, he's uh, a spiritual father of mine, has been since the day we met. And we were talking before the broadcast about the day that we met, because right now, Pastor Andrew has a daughter who uh, is 16, right? 15 or 16? 16, yes. 16. Yeah, Hannah. And that's the age I was when I met him. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) so we, uh, my dad and I were attending a church service in uh, Loves Park, right? Not Machesney Park, Loves Park. Right, in Loves Park, Illinois, yes. Yeah, and uh, and my my dad and Pastor Andrew, I guess, been friends for years, but I hadn't met him before, and we went and visited Pastor Andrew's church and had a great great time, but then it was time to leave, and Pastor Andrew was busy talking with people and praying and stuff, so we just went ahead and left. And all of a sudden, I hear this guy chasing after us, shouting, like, wait, hold on a second. (laughs) 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 And uh, turn around, it's Pastor Andrew, and he's just like, I just see the anointing on your life. Can I pray for you? <laughs> and I'm like, sure. <laughs> you know, I was, I was pretty young at the time and not a, not super experienced with the prophetic, just a little bit. And uh, Pastor Andrew just like encompasses <laughs> the prophetic and just flows. Oh. 
so much in it and he prayed and I was crying then too and I was telling him earlier that that that's been a word that I've just gone back to time and time again. I try and make it a habit of writing out prophetic words that I get and things that I feel like I hear the Lord speaking over my life. And and that's been one that I I wrote down and just have have referenced back. And it actually uh, kind of, uh, I guess, like inspired or, or told me ahead of time about my book, Beauty for My Ashes, that I wrote. And so it's just a really, really special prophecy to me and, and prayer. And that's been one of many. <laughs> so I just Amen. appreciate uh, Pastor Andrew's role in my life. And uh, it, it's funny, I, I was telling him when I asked him if he'd like to be on this episode, I was like, you're pretty brave for accepting because <laughs> you're a man coming on like a woman's podcast and all this Woo-hoo. estrogen. And he's just like, I'm game. Like I got this. <laughs> so, I love it. Thanks for being. You know, it's funny before I was coming downstairs to go to the secret place and uh, my, my wife and daughters were up in the kitchen and I'm like, well, I'm going down now for the broadcast. I said, I'm going to have the privilege of of talking to a a bunch of ladies about what God's saying for their lives. And I said, I know I'm qualified with this because you ladies know that I'm an expert in women. And the table went silence. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely silence. (laughs) And and I'm like, okay, ladies, I need you to say something. They're like, my my daughter's like, it's going to be okay, dad. (laughs) It's going to be okay. You you got this thing, dad. I'm like, thank thank you, ladies. I I appreciate that. You'll get through it, I I think. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's awesome no yeah <laughs> i know it's gonna be great and um i i laugh because i feel like i've kind of helped i mean you have daughters but i feel like i've kind of helped break you in a little bit starting in the, the late teens and then like the 20s <laughs> I've, I've got you prepared now for what you're going to go through with your daughters <laughs> I absolutely agree. You were a great <laughs> training ground for me, yeah. you know, and, and uh, you know, this broadcast is really, it's a new beginning is what it is. That's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to be a part of this with you and with Holy Spirit, because I love new beginnings. Mm-hmm. And I was a part of that new beginning in your life when you were 16, when God released that prophetic word and just awakened some things in you and, and began to just, you know, awaken that destiny inside of you that, that I'm seeing come forth into fruition have over the years. And, even in this this new broadcast. So really excited to be a part of this tonight. That's awesome. Thank you. And why don't you just go ahead? You were telling me that uh, earlier this week you were in prayer about tonight and this broadcast and, and what we're going to be talking about. And the Lord spoke something to you. And I want you to share that with the ladies because I think they're going to be really encouraged by what it was that he said. Excellent. Excellent. Well, you know, I've been excited since you asked me to be a part of this broadcast and I've just been spending time with the Lord and talking to the Lord about it. And so uh, Monday night, I was just spending time in the secret place. I'm coming to you night live from the secret place where I love to connect with God and enjoy him, you know, and it's just he and I in this room and uh, just share intimate times with him here. And so I'm just listening to some praise and worship, just enjoying him. And all of a sudden I heard the Lord just speak out about this broadcast. I heard him say, and I am pouring out the spirit of Esther upon my daughters. And the Lord declared it. It, it wasn't uh, a statement. It was a declaration mm. that God made. And, and so I just got really quiet before the Lord, you know, because I'd been praising and, and speaking in tongues and just enjoying him. And, and, and I just listened in and I heard the Lord declare it again. He said, I'm pouring out the spirit of Esther over my daughters. Mm. And I said, Lord, what, what are you saying? And, and the Lord said, um, I, I want my daughters to know that I am bringing them into a new season. And the Lord put the Hebrew number eight on my heart. And, and the Hebrew number eight is the number of new beginnings. And, and he said it again. He said, I'm bringing my daughters into a new season. I'm bringing them out of a place of bondage, a place of insecurity, a place of feeling in, inferior, a place of being not used in the mm-hmm. church. And God says, I'm raising them up into a new place. Yeah. He said, I'm going to change their condition and I'm going to change their position, mm. the Lord said. And, and so I just kept listening and, and God just started speaking to me about the, the life of Esther and, and took me into Esther chapter two and, and just began to really share his heart with me for the women of this generation. And, and the Lord started talking to me about the fact that, that Esther was an orphan. 
you know, the word just basically tells us that, you know, her, her parents were, 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 were dead, unfortunately. And, and Mordecai, you know, her uncle basically adopts her, you know, as his own daughter. Right. And, and the Lord started talking to me about the, the spirit of adoption and, and how God is raising up true spiritual fathers uh, mm-hmm. for the daughters that have been through so much, that have been motherless, that have been fatherless, that have been through so many things. You know, and it's the it's the father that is supposed to get with God and find out from from Holy Spirit who his daughter or daughters are, and then declare that over them Mm -hmm. and begin to move that identity into their hearts to tell them they're that they're beautiful, to tell them that they're loved, and to give them the love that they need so that when they get older, they're not missing that father's love and then trying to find that father's love in all the wrong places, Right. right? And, and so the Lord says, there's so many women out there that that didn't have healthy father relationships, you know, that had dads that were very human dads that the lights were on and nobody was home, you know, dads that, that didn't know how to show love, you know, and, and the Lord is saying, I'm going to bring spiritual fathers like Mordecai into their lives Mm -hmm. that are going to help them through the seasons of their lives, become everything that I've created them to be. And God said, "I, I took uh, I took Esther from a place of being an orphan to being a queen. And the Lord said, I'm going to begin doing that with my daughters. I'm going to deliver them from the orphan spirit. And I'm going to bring them to the place where they don't feel like they're looking from the outside in any longer. Yeah. But God said, I'm going to do a real healing and give them father encounters with me and with earthly fathers that I place in their lives, spiritual fathers. And the Lord said, they're going to see they're really on the inside looking out. Mm. And that's going to begin to change everything yes. in their lives. And God started speaking to me about how God put Esther right in the middle of a situation that she didn't understand, you know, and it it wasn't the most enjoyable situation to say the least, you know, not only did she lose her parents and now Mordecai is raising her, but she finds herself in the midst of the Babylonian captivity, you know, that's going on in her generation, not because of what she did, but because of what went all around her and all around her with her people. right? Right. And she finds herself in the middle of this. And, and she finds herself in Babylon, and now she finds herself being brought to, you know, the, the king's palace for something that I'm sure she wouldn't have chosen to do, but that was to, to be part of a group of girls that, that the king was going to spend time with and try to find his new queen. But yet Mordecai is in the background of all of this, right. and Mordecai is speaking words of destiny over her, mm-hmm. and he's saying to her, you know what, you're going through things right now that you don't understand. But God has his hand in all of this. You don't have to understand what you're going through. You just have to realize that God is sovereign. And in his sovereignty, he's taking you through an uncomfortable season that's going to set you up for some pretty amazing things. And and the Lord just continued to talk to me and started talking to me about the fact that he lavished Esther with favor. And she had favor in the sight of everybody that she came in contact with as God brought her, ushered her into the palace for such a time as this. Mm-hmm. She, she has favor with the, the, the keeper of the girl. She has favor in the sight of the king. She has favor in, in the sight of those that are now taking care of the girls after they've been with the king. And, and then God raises her up into the place of, of being the new queen. God just covered her with an anointing of favor. And you know, that favor of God opens up doors that have been unwilling to open in previous seasons. Mm -hmm. And and I just heard the Lord say that for the ladies that are that are listening to this broadcast, that God is going to begin opening up doors of favor for you and Mm -hmm. doors that have been stubborn and held shut by the enemy in previous seasons. God says, my word has awaited an appointed time and my timing is perfect. And I'm going to begin opening up doors for you. And the Lord says, just step through those doors in Mm -hmm. faith, the Lord is saying. And if you'll just step through the door in faith, walk by faith and not by sight, trust me because I'm bringing you into the destiny that I I spoke over your life before I ever put you in your mother's womb. God says, I'm stirring up that destiny right now. Mm -hmm. Esther didn't understand the things that were going on, but yet God's destiny was stirring within her and kept her moving forward. Then in the background of that, here's the encouragement of of Mordecai all along the way. You don't understand this, but perhaps God is doing this for such a time as this, Mm -hmm. for such a time as this. 
and, and you know it's amazing she she enters into this this program where the the girls are going to come before the king and and immediately she has such favor with, with the keeper you know of the girls that are that are a part of this whole process that he appoints seven maids to her mm-hmm. and that are going to help her through this process and and seven is the lord's number of completion right. in the hebrew and, and then she goes through 12 months of beauty treatments. And 12 in the Hebrew is the number of ruling, the number of God's appointment, the number of completion, and the number of perfection. Mm-hmm. And she's going through 12 months of beauty treatments. She is six months with myrrh and, and then six months, you know, with, with, with these other beauty treatments that are, that are going on. And, and that's a picture the Lord is saying. That's a picture that right now he's calling his daughters into a season of intimacy with him where he is just going to pour out his frankincense and his myrrh over them and teach them to be like the five wise virgins who cultivated the oil of intimacy with their king that had their lamps full and their wicks trimmed and their lamps burning, knowing that the bridegroom was coming. God is saying to his daughters right now, I'm bringing you into a new season of intimacy with me. And that intimacy is going to change everything because you're going to begin to encounter me like you've never encountered me before. And as you encounter me like this, I am going to impregnate you, the Lord is saying. Mm. And I'm not talking about anything strange here, but I'm talking about the fact that in the natural realm, when the bride and the bridegroom come together in the marriage relationship, and if there's there's nothing blocking uh, what's going on, there's going to be eventually an impregnation, and that impregnation is going to change everything. And the Lord is saying to the ladies that are listening to this broadcast, he's saying that in the secret place, I'm going to bring forth an impregnation through the intimacy that you're going to share with me. I'm going to bring you into the song of songs. The Lord says, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine, yes. and you're going to encounter me in some such a new way that that intimacy is going to bring forth an impregnation and that impregnation is going to bring forth a revelation and that revelation is going to change a generation the Lord is saying, Mm -hmm. just like God used Esther, not only to change her generation, but to preserve the line of Christ Mm -hmm. through something that she wouldn't necessarily have chosen, but yet God chose that for her. Mm -hmm. And and the destiny that God has for the ladies that are listening to the broadcast, it may not be your choice necessarily. It may not have been what you'd look at and say, wow, that is exactly what I want, but it's exactly what God chose for you. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says in John 15, 16, he said, you didn't choose me. I chose you Mm -hmm. and I appointed you to go forth and bear fruit fruit that will last, then you'll ask of the Father whatsoever you will in my name, and he'll give it to you. So ladies, when you receive Jesus as Savior, you didn't receive him because one day you decided, I desperately needed a Savior. You responded to his choosing. Mm -hmm. He chose you before the foundations of the world. Mm -hmm. And the word says that, that he laid out for you, he chose for you good works to do before the foundation of the world was laid. So your life is not the result of your mom and dad having a candlelight dinner or however that, you know, transpired in some romance. Your life came about because God chose to place you in this point in history. Mm -hmm. He could have birthed you in any point in history that he chose and he chose to save you for this point in history. Why? Because the greatest hours of the church are yet ahead of us. The greatest revival the earth has ever seen is about to take place. Mm -hmm. And God is raising you up for such a time as this. And God wants to burn that in your spirit tonight, that you are a woman of purpose, of destiny, that you responded to the calling of God, the choosing of God. And and what God wants to do in your life is bigger than you. Mm-hmm. It's bigger than you because it's not just about you, but it's about everyone that God wants to use you to touch. Right. So in the natural realm, if I was looking at you right now, like I'm looking at Whitney on this broadcast, I wouldn't just see you. In the spirit realm, I'd see all the people standing behind you that God wants to use you to touch. Mm-hmm. So this thing is bigger than you and you can't quit and you can't give up and you can't conform to what men want you to be. And you can't conform to this image that you think you 
need to look like or act like or talk like to be attractive. You are beautiful because Jesus created you. And you are beautiful because you're going to walk in everything that he's called you to walk into. And I want you to be encouraged because God is saying that just as Esther came into the presence of the king and immediately he was enthralled with her beauty, the Lord says, your beauty takes his breath away. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, with one glance, you've stolen my heart. The Lord says, you are beautiful to me. And he says for you, ladies, I wait for you to come into my presence. Mm -hmm. And when you come into my presence, I still the worship in heaven, because I want to devote my full attention to you because you're the object of my affection. You're bringing me the sacrifice of praise and you're, you're not quitting. You're not giving up and you're moving forward, even in the midst of situations and circumstances that you don't understand. Mm-hmm. Esther, I'm sure, felt intimidated, insecure, all these things as she stood in front of the king. But God was already moving on his heart on her behalf. And that's mm-hmm. happening for you, ladies. Mm-hmm. God is moving on your behalf in yes, situations in circumstances that you don't even realize. He's setting things up before you even know what the next step is. I mean, our God is that awesome. Mm -hmm. That's who he is. And Esther comes in front of the king and and she captures his heart. And and the word says, and she was favored among above all of the other women. The Lord says, you are favored in this generation above all of the other women, God is saying. And God's saying, "I'm, I'm raising you up for such a time as this. For such a time as this, I want that phrase to burn on your hearts tonight. Mm -hmm. For such a time as this, you were born for such a time as this. You're stepping into your ministry for such a time as this. You're stepping in your calling for such a time as this, God is saying. Yet as the Lord was was done talking to me about Esther, then the Lord started talking about Joel chapter 2. And in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29 is where the Lord says, I must pour out my spirit on all flesh. He says, your sons and your daughters Mm -hmm. will prophesy. I love it that that God doesn't just say your sons will prophesy. He says, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And some of the ladies that are listening in on this broadcast, you've been raised up in in, in a church where you were were taught if it wasn't outrightly, it was just kind of understood that because you're a woman, you're you're not going to have the same calling as a man. You're not going to have the same opportunities a man as a man would have. And God's saying, whoa, wait a minute. I am bringing my daughters to the forefront. I'm raising up my Esthers. They will be held back by men's insecurities no longer. Mm. because I will not tolerate it. I'm breaking the chains and I'm breaking the bond that have held them back, the Lord is saying. And the Lord is saying, I'm bringing them into their ministries. The Lord said, I'm pouring out my spirit upon my maid servants Mm. in this hour. So ladies, I want you to expect incredible things. The Lord is saying to you as you're listening to this broadcast, the way it's always been in your life, is not the way it's always going to be. Because God says, I can change in a moment what you've struggled with for years. I can heal in a moment woundedness that's been in your heart from the moment of conception. God says, I can heal in a nanosecond, God says, the pain that you went through with your earthly dad Mm -hmm. or pain that you've been through at the the hands of men. God says, I'm healing, I'm restoring, I'm gonna restore back to you what the enemy has stolen and the locust and canker worm have eaten. So ladies, I want to encourage you in the Lord tonight that you are beautiful in him. He has a plan for you that is greater than what your eye has seen, your ears heard, nor mind imagined. And he is releasing over you right now an anointing of breakthrough. There is an anointing that breaks the yoke and God is releasing that over you right now. And I declare, even as you're hearing these words, strongholds are breaking in your life. Even as you're hearing these words, God is releasing a healing over your life. In the name of Jesus, I just declare over you right now the father blessing Mm -hmm. that your earthly dad should have poured out over you if he didn't. And I just declare over you as a spiritual father that you are beautiful. I declare over you that God has an amazing plan for your life. And I free you, beautiful daughter in the Lord, to pursue everything that he has 
for your life. And God is saying for you tonight, I have an Isaac plan for you, Mm -hmm. not an Ishmael plan. The Lord says, you are daughters of the living God. He Mm -hmm. says, he says, I'm raising you up from being an orphan to being a queen. God says, don't settle for second best any longer. He says, your circumstances and situations have, have, have spoken to you that you have to settle in order to get anything for life in life. Mm-hmm. But God says, that's not my voice okay. and that's not my plan. God says, I have a plan for you. You are my princess and don't you settle for second best any longer. Mm-hmm. The Lord says, I don't have the a goodwill store for you. He says, I've got Macy's for you, <laughs> daughter. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And he says, don't settle. Settle for Ishmael when I have Isaac for you. He said, you are my Ruth and I have Boaz Mm -hmm. for you. I have a kinsman redeemer for you, the Lord says. But the Lord says before many of these things happen and come into fruition that, that I'm speaking of tonight, the Lord says, I'm bringing you first into the place of intimacy with me. Yes. The Lord says, I created you as a human being, not a human doing. And the Lord says, I'm teaching you, John chapter 15, I'm teaching you how to abide in the vine Mm -hmm. and you are going to bear fruit, eternal fruit for me that will last. Your life is purposeful. Your life has Mm -hmm. meaning and your life has value. And in the name of Jesus right now, I declare that the spirit of living God is setting you free from the image that the world has shown you of what a beautiful woman looks like. Mm -hmm. I declare tonight in the name of Jesus that a beautiful woman is a Proverbs chapter 31 woman Mm -hmm. and that your true beauty is from your heart and comes forth from the inside outward. Mm -hmm. And and ladies, I just want to say this in love as a spiritual father, the most beautiful women that I've ever met are beautiful because they're completely in love with Jesus. And that love for the Lord comes forth from them. And that's a beauty that will not fade. That's a beauty that the world will not understand. That's a beauty that is going to capture the heart of the Isaac that God has for you and bring you into this plan that God has for your life. So don't settle for second best. That's right. Wow. <laughs> We're just having church over here. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. I love I received Glory. that. And I love what you said just for these these ladies to receive as a spiritual dad, you saying these things. And I, I'm glad you said that because I was going to say that that ladies listening, you know, you may not have a, a father who's, who declares and speaks things over you from the heavenly father. You may not have one that prays over you uh, or your dad may have passed on, but uh, take you can borrow my spiritual dad. <laughs> I'll let you borrow him on this episode and just really oh, receive what he spoke. There were so many good things, so many identity giving things. And past, Pastor Andrew, you're right. Like fathers instill such identity. I mean, literally even in in just the physical sense and the, the genetics and things, like it's the father who determines the the gender of the child and, and so much comes from that. And so um, ladies, receive... Receive what Amen. what a spiritual dad has spoken because he's he's heard from the Lord, and I just I was thinking before we did this episode about um, when my dad passed away. I, I had a dad who, you know, told me I was beautiful and would send me flowers and and would let me know my worth. You know, if I was doing something that that uh, he didn't think was worthy, he would he would let me know. <laughs> you know, I don't think you should be doing that. I don't think you should be talking to him. Like <laughs> he'd let me know. Um, And so, and, you know, like anybody was human and, you know, none of us are perfect, but he definitely did, did give a lot of identity. And then at 20 years old, he passed away pretty suddenly. And Mm. I just remember after the uh, celebration of life service that we had, Pastor Andrew was one of the speakers there. And he just came up to me at the luncheon uh, before he left and just like, I want to pray for you. And, um, one of the specific things that God was, was, was speaking through pastor Andrew was how God was going to step in and, and be my father in a greater way than I had known before because Um, earthly dad went home and he was like, I just see like God's hand just like covering you. And, uh, you know, just started speaking like things that, that God had for me in the future. And 
some things that I've seen and some things I believe I'm going to see. But uh, I've really, I really have seen God step in as a father in my life. Um, you know, at the time when, when Pastor Andrew prayed that, it was just like, okay, like, you know, we'll, I'll take that and see how it goes kind of thing. Not that I wasn't right. believing it, but just, I didn't know what that looked like. You know, I never had reference for it cause I had had an earthly dad and really the Lord has just come in and been such a great dad to me that like that favor you talk about, like I've experienced that time and time again, uh, um, even provision things that I shouldn't be able to afford. or I shouldn't be able to go to school and things like that. Like God's just completely come in and provided for me, like every door that I've needed to open, like God's opened. And, uh, that doesn't mean I've gotten my way all the time <laughs> because like you were talking about, you know, there's, there are, when you submit your life to God and you like full out living for him, you're going to be put in a lot of situations that don't make sense. <laughs> Absolutely. You are. And, and, um, you know, I just think about how many times I've just been like, okay, I, I feel like God's told me to do this. And then I step into it and it's like, all right, Lord, what in the world am I doing? Why am I here? This doesn't make sense, you know? <laughs> but on the other side, I'm on the other side of some of those things and the, the dots do start to connect. But I want to encourage ladies because I've talked with um, quite a few women that right now are just are just in that place of like, I don't I don't know why I'm here. This doesn't make sense or I wouldn't choose to be in this situation. But mm -hmm. I, I feel like God has led me here. Stand your ground and just and stand yes. your post and don't get weary in the well doing, because when you live a life that surrendered to God, like you're you're going to have those times when, when you're, when what you're doing goes against maybe like what your friends think you should be doing or your family or culture thinks you should be doing. Sometimes it's going to be countercultural because uh, we're not citizens here. <laughs> we're citizens right. of heaven. And so some things are going to seem countercultural, but just stand, stand your ground because God, like you said, Pastor Andrew, there's that Isaac out there. And that's not yes. just like a husband. You know, that can be the, the job that God has for you. That can be the ministry that God has for you. Of course, that could be the husband that God has for you. But Amen. we don't want to create Ishmael's. We don't want to move out of his timing because that's that that's when the the Ishmael's happen. You know, when, when Sarah told Abraham Abraham to sleep, um, you know, with her servant, like that's where the Ishmael came from to the right. And to the extent that we're still seeing the results of that to this day. And so absolutely, it's so important that we, we, um, you know, don't settle, but wait for God's best and just, and recognize that it's not always going to feel comfortable when you're waiting for God's best. Amen. And I think, Ms. Whitney, that's what happens a lot of times. You know, we think God's calling is going to be comfortable, but I think you would vouch for me in this that God's call is usually going to be anything but comfortable. Yes. You know, and, and when it gets uncomfortable, that's when God's really, really moving. Mm -hmm. And as you're speaking, Holy Spirit reminded me that a lot of times just before Isaac comes is when the enemy brings in Ishmael. Mm -hmm. just before Isaac comes. Right. So we need to use that as a, as a barometer that when Ishmael shows up, you know, whatever Ishmael may be, you know, a, a man, a job, an opportunity, a ministry, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, that we need to be mature and use that as a gauge. Mm -hmm. Wow, I see exactly what the enemy tried to do here. But wait a minute, that means what God wants to do is coming right on the heels yeah. of that. And you know what? I'm going to value myself. So, so ladies, you know, I want to encourage you to think to yourself, I'm going to value myself as a woman because I'm an Esther in the sight of the Lord and I'm right. worth waiting for. And, and I'm worth waiting for the one that God has for me. And I don't have to settle for second best because God has his best for my life. Therefore, I'm going to wait because God loves me and has his best for me. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm telling you what, ladies, for, for some of you, you're just a God decision away mm -hmm. from some amazing things happening in your mm -hmm. life. And I just declare a shift over you tonight yes. in the name of Jesus, a shifting into God's plan for your life, a mm -hmm. shifting into entrenching in him into a deeper place yes. of surrender, a shifting into a deeper place of intimacy with him that's going to change everything right. in your life. Maybe. In in the Hebrew culture, when a, when a man asked a woman to marry him and, and the engagement was said and the father agreed, he would give her a, a precious gift. 
And she would hold on to that gift and, and he would look at her and he would say, behold, I go away to prepare a place for you. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said to us. Right. And so he would go to his father's house. Jesus said, in my, in my father's house are many rooms or many mansions. I wouldn't say if, if it wasn't so. And, and the bridegroom would go and build an extension on his father's house for he and his bride. Mm -hmm. And while he was doing it, the father would teach the son how to be a husband. And he wouldn't let him go until the room was finished to his approval, and he knew his son was ready. While all that was going on, what was the bride's responsibility? To make herself ready. Mm -hmm. And so her, her wedding party would be with her. Um, the majority of the time, many times they were cousins, they were nieces. So they would all sleep in the same room together. And at night she would have a lamp burning in the window because she wouldn't know the day or the hour mm. that the bridegroom was going to come. And, and so her responsibility was to be ready. And if he came in the middle of the night and a lamp wasn't burning in the window, he would assume that she didn't want the marriage mm. and he would turn around and go back home. Mm. Isn't that interesting? It's also interesting that if the, the lamp was burning in the window, if he came at night and then he came in and she no longer had that gift that he had given her, that precious gift, then that would also signify to him that she didn't want the marriage any longer. Mm -hmm. And what's fascinating about that is that Jesus is, is eating at this house and, and reclining at a table and Mary of Bethany comes through the door. And Mary of Bethany begins weeping at his feet, and she breaks this precious container of nard over his head. And that nard was worth at least a year's salary, and, 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 and she was from Bethany, and Bethany literally meant house of poverty. There was not a whole lot there in Bethany, but Jesus loved to go to Mary and Martha and Lazarus' house there. Where did Mary of Bethany get a precious container of nard that was so expensive? Theologians believe that she was engaged to be married, and it was the gift her earthly bridegroom oh, wow. gave to her. So she breaks through the door in the house in, in, in passion for Jesus. And when she breaks that precious nard over his head, she's really saying, Jesus, you mean more to me than any earthly bridegroom ever mm -hmm. could. And so I'm giving you this precious gift that I could never afford, not caring what my earthly bridegroom would think, because Jesus, mm -hmm. I love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, according to Deuteronomy chapter six. Jesus, it's mm -hmm. you and you're all that matters to me. Wow. And, and ladies, I want to encourage you with that because the Lord has put precious nard within you, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Jesus is your bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is saying to you, I want you to pour that nard out over me extravagantly. Mm -hmm. I want you to develop an extravagant intimacy with me where you pour yourself out over me mm -hmm. and where you know that I am your heavenly bridegroom and everything that you will ever need, I have for you. And I will Right. pour it out upon you in the, in the proper timing. He says, ladies, write Matthew 6, 33 upon your heart. Seek first my kingdom mm -hmm. and my righteousness and all of these things that you desire will be added unto you. Yeah. The Lord is saying in this season, delight yourself in me and I'll give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. But the Lord says, I'm not going to give you your desires for you. I'm going to change right. your desires for you to what I desire for you. Right. And then I'm going to pour that out upon you because in the secret place, I'm going to bring your heart into alignment with mine. And you're going to see that your most precious possession, your affection, that nard that is within you, the Lord is saying, I'm going to show you I'm worthy of you pouring that out upon me because I can love you like no man can. I can pour out lavishly over you what no one else can. I'm jealous for you. I want to be your only lover, the Lord says, and I'm going to show you who I am in the secret place the Lord is saying. So don't be afraid to pour that precious nard out over me for my name is like perfume poured out and you will see who I am like never before. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen.
I love that. <laughs> love that Glory. so much. And Woo. it reminds me of uh, one of the last times you and I, and I came over and had dinner with the family. And and as as you prayed, you saw uh, this vision that God gave you, and it was of a, a checklist. And those who know me know I'm all about the lists. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I love me a good list or two. <laughs> And, um, that's just how I think and how I process things and accomplish things. And, and so that was, I I thought that was so great that the Lord had given you that as a vision, but you were talking about the desires of my heart and you just said, God, um, there was like a list of things that God had that he wanted to do in me and, and for me and stuff like that. And then there were some at the bottom that were like circled or highlighted and, uh, and if I'm forgetting something or missing something, of course you can interject, but (laughs) Um, you had said, Whitney, uh, it was your desires that were at the bottom of the list. <laughs> and I was like, I, I bet they, I've been looking, <laughs> waiting for them. Like, <laughs> I'm not surprised they were at the bottom. And he was, and you, but you were like, no, but the, the amazing thing was like, they were circled and highlighted and just, you know, were easily identifiable because you said that, um, God was saying that I see your desires, Whitney, and I know what you've been praying yes. and interceding for, and they're on the list. They're on my list, yes. but the things I have for you are at the top. And and as I work through the things I want to do in you and through you and for you and stuff like that, it's all in preparation to give you the things that are on your list. And I, and I haven't forgotten them, and I still see them. And yeah. I just think that is such a, a beautiful picture and, and a great picture because... Like I, I, like I was joking earlier, like, I know my things are at the bottom because they haven't happened yet, <laughs> but realizing that it's, it's for a purpose. And even as you yes. were talking about Esther, Esther is such, um, you know, to say it in kind of a churchy way, like a divine appointment, like she's, yes. she's intentional. She's a very intentional character in the Bible because she was for such a time as this. And you can just so clearly yes. see how God raised her up out of obscurity, you know, out of orphanness and, and, and brought her to the palace. Like that's what a huge, yes. what a huge change. One day you're an orphan and a year later you're the queen and, and you're ruling and decreeing and, and, and saving your, your bloodline and, and preserving the yeah, life of uh, Christ. Like she is such, and I mean, ev- every Bible character is intentional, but like Esther just is one that really stands out to me because it's so like blatantly obvious and I just want to encourage the ladies with that, that like your life is very intentional. And, and as Pastor Andrew has been decreeing, like it's Esther intentional. And, and we may not be, you know, literal queens of, of countries. and they, Some of you might be, but um, right. some of us won't be. <laughs> but it's, it got, it's very strategic and it's very intentional that God has raised us up for such a time as this, that God has us working at the places we're working at for such a time as this. God's given you the kids that you have for such a time as this yes. and, and so on and so forth. And, and so don't be discouraged because a lot of times when I, when I felt like my stuff was at the bottom of the list, it was discouraging and like, man, God doesn't, God doesn't care about that for me, or maybe I'm not good enough or, you know, just all these things that would go around in my mind. Uh, but it was never that at all. It was because he he has plans for me and intentions for me yes. and that actually those things are needed so that I can sustain the desires that he's put in my heart like it's not bad that I have those desires but he wants me to be able to sustain them and, yes. and to, to walk in the fullness of them and and if we do something too early you know like it's the same with like fruit if you pick it too early like it's not any good but if you wait till it's ripe and you give it time uh it's 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 the best it can be. And, and that's what I believe over the ladies um, who are listening to this broadcast. Amen. And, and Miss Whitney, you know, Esther's also a type. She's a prophetic picture. Mm-hmm. You know, many of the, the ladies that we see in the Old Testament were, were very much prophetic pictures of what God was going to pour out at the end of the age. So the Lord is pouring out the spirit of Esther. Now, in this point in history, he's pouring out the spirit of Deborah, you know, the, the, who we also see in the Old Testament, the, right. these amazing women that God used in, in, in such incredible ways. You know, we're seeing God pour 
that anointing that they walked in mm -hmm. on this generation. And, and so I, I really believe that the anointing that God is pouring out upon the, the, the women, uh, the women of God is an anointing that is more powerful than the earth has ever seen. Mm -hmm. God keeps talking to me about Catherine Coleman and, and God worked in her life in such an amazing way. And she was such a unique little Methodist girl yeah. that Holy Spirit got a hold of and, and just gave a worldwide ministry to. And she'd literally come out in her, her puffy pirate little dress mm -hmm. things and just kind of flitter around the stage and say, God wanted to give this anointing to a man, but no man would receive it. And so he gave it to me and God would, God used her in such a mighty way. The, the folks that were her staff knew in the height of her ministry when she was ministering, not to get within 15 feet of her because they'd go out in the spirit just like that. They would put dead bodies in the basement of the buildings where she ministered and not tell her. And they would spring to life mm. during her conferences, during her healing sessions, because the anointing was so powerful. And, and she was a type and God is pouring out an anointing greater than one even Catherine Coleman walked in upon this generation. And yeah. ladies, God's going to use you out of intimacy with him. Right. He's going to birth in you an anointing to, to heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out demons and do greater things than what he did. God is breaking the, the bondages that have held you back. Mm -hmm. And God is about to use you in ways that you never dreamed that he was yes. going to use you. So I just want to encourage you in the Lord tonight. Your best days are yet ahead of you, not behind you. The latter glory is going to be so much greater than the former glory in your life. Yeah. And, and always remember, the Lord knows you better than you know yourself. Mm -hmm. So his plan for your life will always be better than what you could ever come up with yeah. on your own. So yeah. trust your bridegroom. Mm -hmm. Trust him. And, and realize those of you that are just kind of just holding on right now, it's been so difficult. It's been so tough. I don't know if I can go further, you know, from this point. The Lord is saying, wait a minute. He said, I said, you'll go through the floodwaters, but you won't be drowned. Mm -hmm. You'll go through the fire, but you won't be burned. Uh -huh. The Lord is saying, I'm taking you by a way you've never been before. Right. Throw out mm -hmm. the old mile markers. Yeah. Throw out the old ways that you encountered me in the past, mm -hmm. because I'm doing a new thing, the Lord is saying. Mm -hmm. I'm declaring it before I bring it forth. Yes. And the Lord says, I love you with an everlasting love. The Lord says, wait, it's good to wait upon me. I know you feel like you've been waiting for so long, but the Lord says, I'm about to pour out over you, lavish over you what I've had for you from the foundations of the world. Don't right. quit. Don't give up. Trust me. The Lord is saying, Amen. 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 It's good. Good stuff. Well, I just want to um, just end this episode by you just being a spiritual dad praying over us because <laughs> um, we can never, never have too many, too many prayers, too many things that, you know, a spiritual dad can be declaring over us. So um, would you do us the, the blessing of praying over us before we uh, head out of this episode? Amen. Hallelujah. So ladies, I just want to encourage you to just put your hands up before the Lord just to receive from him and kind of cup your hands like oil is dripping from the from the ceiling and you and you know it's from the Lord and you want to catch all of that oil that yes. you can. Hallelujah. Because you know that God is pouring it out for you right mm -hmm. now. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Woman of God, I just declare over you right now that you are the head and not the tail, yeah. that you are above and not beneath. I declare over you right now in the name of Jesus, you are a princess. You are not an orphan. I declare over you right now in the name of Jesus, you are beautiful. And in the Lord, if you could just see yourself in the spirit realm. You are a mighty woman of God. I just declare over you right now in the name of Jesus that Holy Spirit is pouring out over you a Proverbs 31 anointing. Yes. And I declare over you right now that God is putting within you a divine unction. I declare over you in the name of Jesus that God is pouring out over you an anointing of 
of intercession. God is pouring out over you an anointing of the prophetic. God is pointing, pouring out over you right now an anointing to fulfill his purpose in your generation. And I declare over you in the name of Jesus, you are strong, you are mighty, you are beautiful. And I declare over you that you're going to run the race, you're going to fight the fight, and you are going to fulfill the Lord's purpose in your generation. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over you. I declare that you've got the blood on the outside and the Lamb of God on the inside. And I declare every word curse that's ever been spoken against you is broken through the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I declare over you every negative word spoken over you by your dad, by your mom, by men, by boyfriends, by husbands are broken in the name of Jesus right now. Every word uttered over you by demons speaking through people is broken through the blood of Jesus right now. And I declare over you that you're a woman without limitation and God's going to use you to build a church without walls. I declare over you that you're a woman of destiny, that God has a plan for your life, that as you surrender to him, him, you will be amazed. And I declare that that is God's theme for your life in this new season. You will be amazed because the anointed one lives inside of you. The fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily within you. And I declare over you, God is stirring up an anointing right now over you. The spirit of the Lord and the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge. He's pouring over you is Iscus power, is Dunamos power, is Kratos power, his excuse the authority, and the favor of Esther like a shield. For he covers your head in the day of battle. He lavishes you with the victory of Calvary, and he speaks over you, I accept you, and I love you, and you don't have to perform for my acceptance. Mm -hmm. And I declare over you now, you're coming into a new season prophetically. I speak the Hebrew number eight over you, a new season in the Lord that's going to be better than any other season that you've ever been in before. It may not be easy, but the end of this new season, you're going to look back and be amazed at what God has done in your life. In the name of Jesus, I speak the fatherly blessing over you right now. I declare you're a beautiful daughter. I decree you're a woman without limitation, and I decree and declare you are free to go after everything that God has for your life. In the spirit realm. I hear God pulling down strongholds right now in your mind. I hear the hammer of the word of God breaking down the lies of the enemy in your life. And I declare you're exchanging the lies for the truth. I declare in the name of Jesus, you're going to begin to look in the mirror and like what you see because you're God's masterpiece. I declare over you that you are beautiful. And when Jesus sees you, he says, with one glance of your eye, woman of God, God, you captured my heart. Mm -hmm. And I declare over you that God's best is now beginning to enter into your life. I speak over you right now that God is removing relationships from your life that are toxic. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, I declare God is removing you out of situations that are toxic. Mm -hmm. And God is detoxifying you with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I declare you're about to think thoughts that are in alignment with the word of God. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I declare whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, Mm -hmm. you're going to think on these things. I declare you're free from man's lustful desires and what he wants a woman to be. And I'm free. I declare you're free to be everything that God created you to be. Yes. And I just pray over you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, daughter of God. May the Lord turn his countenance towards you and fill you with shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And as a spiritual father, I bless you right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare that your legal right through the new covenant in the blood of Jesus is the blessing and not the curse, is life and not death, is hope and not despair. I command the spirit of depression and oppression to come off of you in the name of Jesus right now. And I decree over you in the name of Jesus that he is pouring out over you now in the spirit, love, joy, peace, 
gentleness, goodness, kindness, meekness, long-suffering, and self-control. And I call you, woman of God, into the destiny that God has for your life. And I speak over you now, shift in the name of Jesus. Woman of God, shift into this new season Mm -hmm. that God has for you. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. In the name of Adonai, in the name of Jehovah, in the name of Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, crucified, risen, and seated at the right hand of the Father. I bless you, daughter of God. Now step into the Esther anointing that he has for you in Jesus' name. For he's the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by him. Through the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of the Father, I declare this over you now. Amen and amen. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. (laughs) So be it. That's good. I receive all of it. That Glory. is incredible. Ladies, I encourage you, whether it's something that we was spoken throughout this episode or in his prayer just now, uh, if there's something that just really ignited your heart and you're like, man, that's for me or that that touched me, that blesses me, write it down and, and yes. keep it somewhere where you can go back and, and declare it. You can go back and, and read it over when when you're feeling discouraged or when you're feeling hopeless or when you're not feeling very valuable uh, go back or even replay this this episode and just uh, this is a good one to to listen to a couple times at least <laughs> and just and just get that identity like I think it's so important especially in this time that we just really step into our God given identities because. Uh, yeah. That, that shift is coming. It, it, it may already be Woo. here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> after that prayer, like, I think it's here. Glory. <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you so much, Pastor Andrew, for coming on the show. You are just such a huge blessing, and I hope mm-hmm. this is just the first of many times that you'll join us on Beauty of Becoming. <laughs> Praise God. Well, if anything was good tonight, it was the Lord. Hallelujah. We give him all the glory. We give him all the honor and all the praise. Praise God. Amen. Well, thank you so much. And uh, ladies, thank you for tuning in. I know this has been a huge blessing. to you. It's been a blessing to me. So (laughs) I know it's been a blessing to all of you. But um, I just encourage you just to go forth and be confident in who God has called you to be and what he's called you to do. Even if it doesn't make sense, even if you don't see what the outcome is going to be in the future, God has a purpose for you and it, and he's intentional about you, about his relationship with you and uh, just about your life and what he has for you. Thanks for listening to the Beauty of Becoming podcast. If you've enjoyed today's conversation, hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel and select the bell icon so you're notified whenever new content is posted. 